This video is part of a series of exam question walkthroughs, mainly focused on methods for the AQA A-level chemistry required practical activities. This question is looking at part of the required practical activity for, and in particular, how we can identify a number of different anions. Before I walk you through how I would tackle this question, pause the video and have a go at answering it for yourself. Remember, this is going to be a six mark question, so you need to include sufficient detail and you need to make sure that you're hitting all of the different parts of the question as well. For some of the required practical activities, like making a standard solution or carrying out a titration, there is really just one method and you can write that on a flashcard and learn it and just churn it out if that particular required practical activity comes up in the exam. But then there are some like this one and the organic test tube reactions where you can't just learn a model answer because there are a bunch of different tests and you're only going to be asked about a few of them. And the ones that you are asked about, you're going to need to put in a logical order and think about how they could interact with each other say you can't add hydrochloric acid to something if you're then going to test for chloride ions later so if required practical four or six comes up i'd recommend doing a bit of annotating of the question first rather than just diving in and starting writing and similarly it's important that you've read through the question properly and you've identified any additional information they're asking you to give so quite often for a question like this they might have your three levels as being identifying what the tests are and putting them in an order saying what the results of those tests might be and then also as we've done here asking for equations and you need to have covered all three three parts of that in order to get the highest marks. So before I start writing anything, I want to identify what tests I'm going to need to do. So I've got three different potassium compounds. In other words, the potassium is irrelevant. We're not going to think about it. So what we're really asking is how do we differentiate between carbonates, iodides and chlorides? So for the carbonate, we test for those by adding acid and looking for effervescence. And then iodide and chloride are examples of halide ions. So I'm going to want to be testing for those using silver nitrate. But I've been told that I've been given solid samples here. And of course, you can't use silver nitrate just on a solid. We need to have a solution. So we're also going to need to describe that we're making those up to a solution using some distilled water at some point. They've asked in the question for us to outline a series of tests. So not just some independent different tests, but we need to put them together in a logical order. So we're going to start off by testing the solid samples using acid to see whether they contain carbonate ions. And we need to think carefully about which acid we're going to use because they've said that they want a series of tests. So whichever acid we're using, it can't interfere with the results of the halide test later. So we obviously can't use hydrochloric acid because that would contain chloride ions, which would definitely interfere with the results of that test. But we also shouldn't use sulfuric acid because that would end up producing a silver sulfate um, compound which is also a white insoluble compound so again that would interfere with the results of the test so we're going to start off and we're going to add nitric acid to our three solid samples and what we're expecting to see is that the potassium carbonate will be the one that bubbles and the other two won't bubble they won't have a visible change and then as it says in the question we need to provide an equation for this including the state symbols so really often with this kind of question people miss out the equation or they miss out the state symbols so we've got our solid potassium carbonate reacting with nitric acid to make potassium nitrate, which is aqueous, and then also the carbon dioxide gas and the water, which, of course, is a liquid. And then before we can complete that halide test with silver nitrate, we're going to need to make these up into solutions. Um, they're probably already a little bit on the wet side because of the addition of the acid, but we're going to say that we'll add a bit more water and then we can add our silver nitrate. Now, of course, typically before we add silver nitrate, we would add some nitric acid to remove any leftover carbonates or sulfates that might give us um, a false positive. But since we've already added some nitric acid as part of the first test, we don't need to now add more. And what we're expecting to see when we do add that is that if we've got the potassium chloride, then we'll see a white precipitate. So again, here we need to give our equation. And as you can see, the silver chloride, it's a precipitate. So it's going to be a solid um, and that's included in there. And you could, of course, give ionic equations rather than um, full symbol equations. So we could remove the spectator ions that are not part of this. Um, and then if we've got potassium iodide, we're going to have a yellow precipitate. And so we then have um, a very similar chemical equation for that one. 
Thank you very much for watching and I hope you're now feeling more confident about how to handle a question about the anion testing in Required Practical 4. At some stage I'll try to do another video looking at the cations. If you are finding these videos useful then don't forget to like and subscribe for more A-level chemistry content coming soon.